<laughs> Mira, oh. get over here. Come on. John's going to go get Mira. She's the star. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. The one and only. You're so cute. You ready to be on YouTube? You ready to be on YouTube? Say something. Hello. <laughs> no. Hello, my friends. It is really good to see you. I am with two of my favorite <laughs> creatures on the planet. I can't say two humans because nope. you're not. Oh, Mira, you're knocking things over, but that's okay. You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever. And John and Mira have just completed an individual time trial of the tour divide. <laughs> She's all wet and sneaky. Mm. They rode their bikes from Banff, Canada to the border of Mexico, 2,700 miles. It's pretty amazing what they just pulled off and we're gonna chat with them because it's, it's fascinating. So John, welcome to Boulder, Colorado. It's so good to have you here. We've been having so much fun. I took them on the Thursday night cruiser ride yeah. and we've done some other fun things while they've been here, but uh, the audience wants to know. How was this experience and how did you get inspired to do such a thing? You've been bike touring for a lot of your adult life, but this was a race. You're going as fast as possible with a dog. First time ever. Here we go. First time ever. Yeah. Hold, hold that fancy okay, mic. Okay. I'll hold the, the fancy mic. Uh, yeah. First time ever. Well, inspiration, that's probably the easy part. Um, it's all your fault. <laughs> it's all Ryan's fault. So we had ridden in, uh, I guess, 2020 during uh, COVID, we rode from, uh, I met you on your third day, basically from the from border to border, more or less, on the Great Divide mountain bike route, which is um, which is basically the Tour Divide. Yeah. And we had such a great time riding. What do you think of that? Yeah, you got to run really fast, didn't you? People have raced the Tour Divide um, in a bunch of different categories, and and so we decided to do it as the dog packing team, which we do everything. <laughs> so yeah, first time. And they gave us our own little dot to track. And it was, uh, yeah, 4,300 uh, 4, kilometers, 2,700 miles. And I think about 30, you know, 50,000 meters of elevation gain. So I think it might be something, could be as many as eight times up Everest. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot, a lot up, up and down. down. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Right yeah. on. So, You've been bike touring with Mira for a long time. There's a big difference between bike touring and racing. How did you get yourself prepared for this? And then let's talk about the race and the grand depart up there in Banff. Yeah. Um, yeah, preparing, he's right. So the racing is definitely different from touring. Touring, we can stop. Yeah. Anything that interests us, we can stop. We, you know, we often travel without a, a big schedule. Yeah. Or, you know, we might have some timing commitments to meet someone. You know, one day we met someone, we're meeting people in Helena, um, which you're allowed to do when you're riding your bike, just touring. Yeah, the race is different. Uh, you're trying to go as quickly as possible, so you're not sleeping a lot. Your, your resupplies are, are, you know, you're trying to make those efficient and quick and not carry too much, so restaurant stops. And, um, yeah, then I have to manage Mira's energy as well. So the amount of food that she has and the amount of food that I have. So we're riding longer and further with less sleep. Uh, and we w rarely stop for weather conditions. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big difference. Yeah. Quickly yeah. give us the stats on how much weight it adds to have Mira and dog food in this extended cargo bike. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to talk in rough numbers because I don't, ha I haven't yet put it on a scale with Mira, but I know that she weighs about 40 pounds, so about 19 kilograms. A bag of, f and she's on the bike on all the flats, most of the downhills, and on hills, particularly if it's asphalt or um, even gravel, up to about four or five percent uh, grade. After that, I have her out of the basket so I can drop the, the weight there, the 40 pounds, and then her water. And I maybe carry as much as 30% extra for her. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot. If I'm carrying, um, you know, six liters for myself, you know, enough extra, it really does add up fast, um, you know, places like New Mexico. When other areas we had surface water, so that was pretty good. Um, so, so, then the bike is a little bit extended so it's a little bit heavier we got the basket we got the rack which you wouldn't have if you're racing 
So my estimate with Mira, food for her and water, without food for myself and without water for myself, it's, it's definitely over 100 pounds and possibly as much as 120 pounds yeah. is possible. So it's a, it, you know, compare that to, you know, sort of a middle of the pack, um, sort of a middle lightweight pack mm -hmm. set up on a Tour Divide rider's bike could be something like 40 pounds, all in, everything included. Just one mirror. Yeah, so 80 pounds, is that right? Yeah, up to 80 pounds more yeah. than uh, what a regular rider has. So <laughs> yeah, it's dramatic. Yeah, it's a big change. Oh, and yeah. I, I'm guessing you're wondering what this is. John, you, you got the microphone, you can talk, or I'll, I'll hold. But uh, this is my Pee Wee Herman Chia pet, isn't this the coolest thing you've ever seen? So awesome. Anyway, a little, um, little uh, inter interlude there. I'm not sponsored by Chia Pet. Or by Pee Wee Herman. Or by Pee Wee Herman. Re Pee rest in peace. I love yeah. you, Pee Wee. Ole, 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 ole. So, you're up in Banff at the Grand Depart. There's a few hundred people from all over the world. This is a lot of people who have dreamed about doing this for a long time. The energy is through the roof and really positive and fun. I haven't been there, but I can only imagine. You're up there with Mira, who is now an international superstar. And uh, you take off, and you have a goal in mind, and you're, you're going fast. You're blazing. Yeah, so to that point, there's a lot of energy in Banff. So, the race, so for those that don't know, the race starts in Banff, Alberta, Canada, right in the town site in the National Park, heads south through the park, and because of that, they do staggered starts. So lots of people there, and the, most, and the reason why they do that is to avoid wildlife conflict. Mm. And so, um, yeah, tons of people coming up to say hi to Mira, and then of course me, because I'm the one <laughs> riding the bike. People love you too, John, yeah, it's it, not just it, Mira. But it's, it's really great that they come out to see us and support us. And so, yeah, it, in waves of, I think, 10 people is how it worked. So we had people, um, I think it was every five minutes a new wave came out. And then I had put down that we had an estimate of 21 days for our race. So that was something um, approximating 200 kilometers a day, I think, mm -hmm. roughly. Someone else could, could do the math, but I, I sort of forget there. And so we, we, off we went, yeah. And it's, it's, I, I have a racing background in road and track in my late teens, early 20s. Yeah. So I, I was definitely giving it gas. And uh, our first day was Banff to Fernie, so that's 250, 270 kilometers, 160, you know, 60, 70, 80 miles. I'm not sure what that works out to. Um, long <laughs> day, yeah, yeah. And so so you, you start off big, you're going hard, but uh, you realize fairly quickly, oh wait, I might be pushing it a little bit too hard. Yeah, because I'm not riding alone. So on day one, um, it's, a lot, it's a tremendous amount of up and down and, and changes. So er, a lot of those mirrors out of the basket. Yeah. And then a bunch of single track with a lot of tourists like and, of course, bear activity and all that kind of stuff. So Mira was on leash for a lot of that and in and out of the basket, which meant that um, she walked a tremendous amount on that, those first days. Yeah. And so by the time we got to Fernie, she had a bit of a limp. And so we grabbed a hotel uh, for a few hours in Fernie. That took a little while, ate some time up. And when we got up, she was still kind of limping. Uh, I put her in the basket for, for a lot, uh, for all the climbs, basically for the next three days. And so, like I had just mentioned earlier, she weighs 40 pounds. So, you know, if I'm riding a bike that weighs 100, 120 pounds, uh, it's a lot. And so my knee got very, my right knee got very, very sore. I couldn't really walk without a limp. Um, she was still limping. And later on, we had a mechanical issue. We had a brand new hub uh, seize up, the free hub body seized. Uh, so yeah, we had a, a litany of issues yeah. in there. What happened after that, you may ask. Yes, I, I was going to ask that. What happened? What did you do next? We, uh, we had gone, we had took a rest, most, yeah, a rest day in Helena. It didn't sort the problem out. Um, it was very painful and slow going up the, all these climbs. 
um, took a rest day in Butte, still didn't do much. And so I was, I'd gotten outside of Butte, you come out to the highway and there's a, a famous climb in, within the route that both, that all the routes that follow this path do called Fleecer Ridge. And I looked up, my hub is seized. It could fail completely. Mira can't walk without a limp, although she's starting to be better. Okay. My limp is getting worse. Mm. I looked up at Fleecer Ridge, it's fully in the rain. And I thought, I don't think this makes sense to go walking in the rain for hours and hours yeah. with a bad knee that's getting worse, with a hub that might fail, meaning we would have to walk further. So we decided to scratch. Mm. Yeah. At that point, we were done. We were, you were like, done. You were, yeah. you were done with the race. You were out of it. That's right. You tapped the button. Totally. A little disappointing, but it was the right call. Because uh, my main priority, of course, is that Mira is safe and healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, so, then we were done. So, all of us back home were watching, thousands of you, too. And we're wondering, because we can see your dot not moving for a long period of time. And I'm trying to get in touch with John, and I'm texting him, and I'm using his little Garmin in reach. And I'm, I'm finally getting some information that uh, he's just, he's hurting too much and he's going to stop the race. And on, and on my side here in Boulder, I'm like, wow, it must really be hard if you're pulling out of the race because you're one of the toughest guys I know. So the, the, the circumstances must have really been dire. And I, I was kind of sad, but, you know, I was like, John will be fine. He'll, he'll be great. He's going to continue riding his bike around the world, and this isn't going to phase him. But then, John. Yeah. So uh, there, there are some more details to the story in travel, but basically I, I never felt like I was defeated or it was a failure. You know, uh, there was these, these sort of circumstances that came up and, you know, could have been through decisions we made or not made. You know, the hub was brand new. It's a high-end hub. I expected yeah. to, to, to at least you know, finish the one race, like yeah. 4,000 kilometers. Um, so, I, you know, I think it was the right, it was definitely the right decision at the time, given where we were at. But then I thought, well, you know, I was starting to feel a little bit better in the, in the days and weeks afterwards. And there was no need to really go elsewhere yet. I had the time, I had done the training. We had learned a lot in that first week. And so it just made sense to me to then do it as an individual time trial, an ITT. Because people do that all the time. They start in either the south end at Antelope Wells or they start in Banff. And, they, and we all carry GPS trackers anyway. That's how the race organizers know where we are and how our times are and whether we're off course or on or if we stopped. Or, and um, so, yeah, I just made way, my way, both Mira and I, back up to Banff, and um, I made some adjustments to the bike, had a new hub put in the, in the rear wheel, and um, got ready to go basically this, the same day of the month, the 14th, so basically a month later, in July instead of August, at the same time of day, we ended up in Banff with no one else except a couple of close friends, yeah. and uh, headed down the same course right on man. yeah that's amazing let's do a quick commercial break john you talk yeah. i'm going to show them the shirt here oh yeah what are we, what so this so this is uh some of our mira merchandise this is the starry night uh designed by kook grin media so you can see the current bike that we're riding mira with her rec specs in the basket enjoying the perseid meteor shower it looks like uh -huh. screaming by somewhere in a desert <laughs> yeah don't worry about it those can be found on the links in our Instagram, link in the bio, Mira Merch, or you could search for Mira La Pera on the Teespring store. And uh, yeah, they're made to order and they'll show up uh, pretty quick. And yeah. they're awesome. Yeah, I'm pretty okay. happy with that one. So you've just started the individual time trial. You're ready to rock and roll. Your body's better, Mira's better. You've learned some things and you're on a mission, but from what you told me, you were going to dial back the mileage so that you could save your body a bit. Because it's 2,700 miles. The idea was to finish the event. If I, if I had done some learning and then behaved the same way that I did on the first round, 
it would probably end up with the same result, right? I mean, why would I expect anything different? So the so what I did was because you know running you know uh, you know more than a hundred miles a day is was hard on Mira, so I backed it down to doing something around 100 miles, 160 kilometers every day. Sometimes it would be more, 180, 190 kilometers. If you haven't noticed, I'm Canadian, so I work in kilometers. <laughs> and, um, and then sometimes, it, a couple times it was a little bit less, you know, heat or, or terrain. And then that's the other thing that was a challenge is that if, you know, we had some flat terrain or rolling terrain through the day, we've gotten close to our distance number but then the day is going to finish off with a big massive climb but i've already used up mira's energy i had that decision do i stop and then try and go earlier in the morning try and make it up the next day or do i push through but maybe it's too much for mira is the thing so that real that that energy balance of how much because the thing is she's so heavy i mean she's not crazy heavy but 40 pounds extra on a bike is a lot and so yeah just being able to manage that amount of energy it and it was a consistent number to shoot for uh 100 miles a day and that's a pretty reasonable number um you know i th i think at least for us that's for the a weight. lot of miles a day no matter who you are what you're doing yeah it's a long way to drive a car so i mean riding your bike on the great divide dirt roads with the dog in and out in and out in and out it's pretty incredible. Yeah. So you should be really proud. How many days did it take you? And you've been doing this for so many years. You're dialed in in so many ways. You know how the world works. Did you learn anything new about yourself through this process of, of racing the divide? I, I think Ryan just called me old. Older <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, than me. To answer your last question first, uh, yeah, every day we learn something. That's sure. the crazy thing. Yeah, I've been riding just with dogs for the last eight years. Six, yeah. with, she just turned six on this trip, and and every day I learn something new about the set, you know, our setup, you know, f food, how much I was eating it on a regular basis, hydration, um, you know, measuring the amount of energy that we expend, um, you know, her temperament, what what she needs, food and and attention. So let's get her back. Yeah, on. yeah. You, you keep talking. So it, yeah, it was great to learn all that stuff every day. And I think then that was the other thing that, you know, the, the learning that we had gotten from the first week of the Grand Depart, I just didn't want that to be lost. Yeah. So it's definitely gonna change the way that we travel. And it's been, it's been great. Like, you know, we, we'd, during the Grand Depart, we had a huge number of people come out to see us. Yeah. In fact, it seemed like, you know, Mira was like the, the biggest draw for the people following the race, which was really incredible to us. We didn't expect that so I think you know it was something close to or even around Hel just Helena area before the town in the city um, and then afterwards because people can follow our tracker uh, yeah we must have had something like 30 people just in that little area and then you know people like just outside of of Banff and at Kananaskis and all the way through um, you know early in the morning when we left you know our camp or hotel and and uh, late into the evening, so yeah, it was it was um, yeah, it's been pretty interesting. You're I traveling think. with a celebrity now. Yeah, definitely. It's fu funny. We'll uh, maybe some of you are watching this video on Ryan's channel have already said hello to us in towns, and people recognize Mira, yeah. and then uh, and then we'll wave or yell her name and and come and say hi. So it's yeah. great. Yeah. So yeah, we we learned a a lot, I think. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and, and I, we're able, to, I think, to travel a little bit lighter now, which is good. And I think, um, yeah, it's, would I do it again? I don't know, is a question that comes to mind. Uh, I don't, well, <laughs> I how don't many know. days did it take Oh, you? yeah, that's a good question. So how many days? How many days did it take us to do the, the Tour Divide this time? So it was 28 days and change. I mean, it might be 28 days, 14 hours. Okay. Not totally sure. We can, we'll be able to check that on the... It doesn't really matter. You went no. pretty fast, about 100 miles a day. Yeah, basically something close to 100 miles a day, a little bit less than that. Um, we finished, so it is the the first, the fastest, and the only known time for a dog packing <laughs> team to yeah. to to do it. So, yeah, I think we're pretty happy with that. Here, yeah. pass the mic over. Just hold it for me. Yeah. So you had never been to New Mexico before on this route. 
um, that was all new to you. And for me, I've done it. It's definitely the roughest part of the divide. How did New Mexico treat you? Uh, pretty well. Yeah. yeah, the people and the drivers of, Mex of New Mexico are super friendly, gave us lots of space, so that was really appreciated. But the, the landscape is dry, it's hot, <laughs> and it's super hilly. And so by the time uh, we got down to New Mexico, so that's our, you know, our last state. So we have uh, Alberta, British Columbia, Montana, a little bit of Idaho, a lot of Wyoming, Colorado up and down, and then finally New Mexico. Um, my legs were super tired. Yeah. And uh, if, I, you know, if I went too hard, too hard, have a hot heart rate, I, was, I could really tell quickly that I was deep down fatigued. So, yeah, it was tricky. So, so a couple of the days, like from um, Abique to Cuba. Abiquiu. Abiquiu, thank you. I get it confused with it, a Mexican town. <laughs> Abiquiu and, uh, to Cuba. And then I think the next day as well to Grants, I think it is, we rode at night. We had started out actually first thing in the morning, uh, and it was uh, already too hot. Um, it was, you know, getting going to be over into the hundreds. There's no water on the route after the first, you know, 10 kilometers. And it's about a 40 kilometer climb on super rough roads. You would need a high clearance four wheel drive to ride them. And um, yeah, rode in about 16 kilometers, so 10 miles. Realized, no, nope, it's too hot. It's too, it's too little water. And um, I turned around and came back to Abaku and uh, hung out in the shade yeah. for the entire rest of the day. And then as the sun was going down, I got some more water, uh, got a little bit of resupply, and uh, yeah, we headed out. So I had, for that section, I had six liters of water, uh, three in a, in a running vest, and then a soft bladder inside the frame bag. And then a little bit extra, like um, Mira's got a little drink bottle. Um, yeah, so it was a, it was a lot of weight. What yeah. kind of food were you eating mostly? Burritos. Así es, amigo. Frozen, st to start out with, gas station style burritos. So I've, tr I've tried most of what's available in the grocery stores <laughs> and the gas stations. And uh, yeah, 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 they suck after a while. <laughs> I mean, because they're like, what you, what you do is you buy, because the, these burritos, they're marked with the calorie count on them. So it's easy to be like, okay, I'm going to get 300 calories an hour. So I can basically eat one of these medium-sized burritos every hour, mm -hmm. and um, you buy them frozen. Some of them are in, in the in the pack, and some of them are in the, in the frame bag. And so over the day, they thaw out. So if you get bean and cheese ones, or sometimes a bean and meat one, you know they don't need. They just need to be reheated. They've already been cooked. And um, so yeah, you just eat these thawed out uh, burritos, and then she gets the the tail end of it in <laughs> in the basket. And yeah, lots of Snickers, and I mean those ex the the kind of the expensive robot food, the gels, the the bars, that kind of stuff. After a while, one, it's hard to find, and then two, it's expensive, and then the taste just becomes horrible. So you'll just eat, yeah, I mean we'll eat burritos, uh, chips, candy, um, yeah, Coca Cola, uh, yeah, whatever we can get our hands on yeah. Yeah, at a certain point. And then for Mira, it's mostly kibble and dog treats and lots of water, and then a little bit of, um, yeah, like I said, the tail end of the burritos, um, and a few other little bits and pieces there, but just the, the regular dog food. And it's no problem finding dog food on the road? No, um, so, so yeah, most, most gas stations, or a lot of gas station uh, shops these days will carry dog food, like at a Love's mm -hmm. truck stop or something like that, or even a smaller gas station, and uh, grocery stores, uh, in the bigger towns definitely have it and typically the smallest size bag that I can buy is about four or five pounds and then sometimes it's a tough call if it's really hilly it's like well I don't want to waste money I don't want to waste food so I'll give her food at the store at the resupply and then maybe you know if she doesn't eat all of it I'll just leave it behind or, or, or put it in the garbage um, as, so that I'm not overloading the bike it's a, it's a lot of extra weight but I also need to be aware of how much further it is to the next town to be able to get reliable source uh, dog food. So I think there was maybe only one time I carried a, f maybe once or twice I carried a full bag. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a lot, but it's definitely available almost everywhere. That's cool. Yeah. Right on. 
How long have we been talking for? What does that say? Oh, 26 minutes. All right, good. We're pretty good. Yeah, we're covering a lot. Yeah, definitely. What did you feel as you got close to that fence in Antelope Wells? We've all seen the photos of finishers holding their bikes up. I've never actually been there because my belt broke when I did it, didn't make it there. You had never been there. Did it feel kind of surreal rolling up to that fence and be like, wow, this is, this is it. And this is kind of anticlimactic. I am in the middle of nowhere. There's nobody cheering you on. There's no trophy. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah, there, there is no trophy. There is no prize money. It's only, it, yeah, it's the sense of accomplishment of riding all that distance, putting that all together, because everyone that does it spends a lot of time up front, they do a lot of training, they spend a lot of money prepping their bike and their gear and thought and research. And then there's all that time, they're away. So yeah, by the time we got there, it was more like not the climax of the tale, but the resolution. And it was really nice. We were, we, it was like six or seven o'clock. So the road, the last town you go to is Achita, uh, New Mexico, it's a small little town. I think it's ranching mainly. And then it's basically a paved road, road that sort of does a couple of turns, but it's basically just headed right to the border. Mm -hmm. And it's the smallest border station on the whole southern border, the U.S. and Mexico. And it's not open 24 hours a day. It closes at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not open. So by the time I got there, it was closed. And there was no one there. And I really liked that. It was quiet. We had a beautiful sunset and we were able to just ride into the fence and, and it was just Mira and I and um, yeah. And then we just uh, up to the fence and, and sent a message back to um, the bike ranch in Achita to Jeffrey Sharp to come pick us up. He runs a shuttle service for people. It's about uh, 70 kilometers. So what is that, 40 miles or something like that from, from the town site to the border? So, and there's nothing in between no, in terms of supplies. So yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. And then we just, we just uh, chilled out for a little bit. We, there is some cell service. I was able to pick up Mexican cell service. And uh, yeah, called some friends and <laughs> just chilled out, ate another frozen burrito, <laughs> thought burrito. And uh, yeah, just tuck it in. Yeah. Nice. And now it's been a, just a bit over a week cool. since we were there. Yeah. Yeah. So you just accomplished something huge physically and mentally, and you proved to the world that this can be done with a dog. You hope that others do this right with dogs. That's kind of the goal is you're like, hey, like, other people can do this. Nobody's going to be like Mira, of course, no. but there's other dogs out there that are pretty special, but nobody is Mira. Um, going forward... Um, you're going to continue traveling around the world. That's what you're doing. No more racing. Back to just John and Mira Pace. Are you excited about that? Hold on one second. I am just going to get this screaming dog. Let her out here. So you can see She's that pissed. <laughs> Go okay. find Mira. Okay. Yeah, she want to come say Yeah. yeah so this, this, is, this is Amelia's dog. She's the one that's been barking. She's also sweet, but she's way too big for dog packing. <laughs> <laughs> say hi, Emmy. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, we've, we finished the race. You know, I think if people want to do it and they want to ask us questions, yeah. I mean, that's great. If they do it in a faster time, that's great too. I, I think uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of benefits to adventuring with your dog. You know, we have dogs in our life, and then, we, you know, a lot of us are active people. We, you leave them at home, but I'm not sure that that's the purpose of what we're doing uh, but it maybe a, a, a side benefit. It does show a way that you can go and do these adventures with your dog, whether it's riding or it could be paddling or, or um, you know, trail running or all, all kinds of different sports you can do and include your dog. As long as you do it in a thoughtful, safe manner, then it's great. And then for us, yeah, that was part of the reason. You know, when we were talking in, in the, you know, that tour we did around uh, the countryside of Oaxaca, um, you know, it just... The idea of doing the race was a good way to be excited, mm -hmm. to kind of rekindle our excitement. And it, it definitely did that. That goal of, of uh, being excited about riding again is uh, back. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to go through, you know, we've got one more state, Chiapas, to go through, and then we're into Guatemala. And, and we've been talking a little bit, um, 
because I've never actually been into Central America, which is still part of the North American continent. And so, uh, yeah, wh which route I'm going to go, and there's so much to see and kind of plan that out. So I'm excited about that, and, and then to get into South America in the new year. So Mira and I got lots to go, and, and, we, and then the cool thing about having done a race where you, you know, you're always kind of have a sense of urgency. You're going to the grocery store with your list to get your things and get packed and get going and back on the bike so you're moving forward. It'll be nice to be able to stop and then just take a few more things in, whether it's people's culture or their food or just the landscapes. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, I'm cool. super excited. Right on. Well, I think my lucky star is that I ran into you guys in the middle of nowhere in the Baja Divide in January 2020. It's led to this amazing friendship. We've gotten to adventure uh, many other times, and we will find each other down the road again. We've been having a great week here in Boulder, like I said, and uh, I wish you all the best going forward. All of you can follow them on YouTube and Instagram, but you're most active on Instagram, right? So if you want like up-to-date information of where they're at, what they're doing, Instagram is where to follow. Them. That's right, and that's Mira La Pera. Let's get let's get Mira back here. Go get Mira, John. Go. We've got to show the people Mira one last time. She's trying to run away. There she. Is. <laughs> Come on, Emmy, get out of here. There she is. Yeah, bring her up close to the lens. Here, go show her. Show her. Show how cute she is. Look how cute Mira is. <laughs> oh, I love that dog so much. I've said this before, but uh, Mira, meeting Mira and traveling Mira, with Mira, really got me excited about dogs in a way that I've never been excited before. You know, I've, we've had family pets and family dogs, but Mira is special, really special. And she just makes me laugh every time I hang out with her. Since she's been here in Boulder, she runs up to my room every single morning and she jumps on my bed and she freaks out and she just like runs her nose into me and she's just always ready to have a good time. And I think we can all learn from Mira. You know, be like Mira, you know, like the Michael Jordan commercials, be like Mike. We can all be like Mira, wake up every day enthusiastic and excited and just ready for anything, right? Totally. And if you want a Be Like Mira t-shirt to help <laughs> support Mira, dog food, all those kind of things, then uh, link below to the uh, store would be much appreciated. Yeah. And they have a Patreon as well. So if you want to support them that way, he does some special behind the scenes things for his patrons. So join that. Um, I think it's, it's dinner time. The dogs are very excited. They're restless, so we're going to sign off. But thank you all so much for watching this video. Thank you for uh, following and supporting John. I know you love him so much and Mira. And they're going to continue riding, and you're going to continue loving them, and it's going to be great. So uh, we will see you another time in another place in the world, and we'll all ride together again. Nos vemos! Like and subscribe. <laughs> Smash the like button. Smash the like button. If you want me to throw this little stick right here, this little one. Okay, go. Did you find it? Did you find that little stick? Yeah, it's in your mouth. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> and Mira has been teaching Emmy how to fetch too. Emmy never did this before, but now she loves sticks. She doesn't really fetch them. She just destroys them.